Hi there, welcome to TCM, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Tonight we have a couple of features with leading man John Gavin, both of them based on novels by Fanny Hurst. In a couple of hours, we'll present Gavin alongside Susan Hayward in a glitzy 1961 drama, Backstreet. But first, from Universal in 1959, Gavin and Lana Turner star in Imitation of Life. Fanny Hurst's novel, Imitation of Life, had been turned into a movie before, shortly after its publication in 1933, a version starring Claudette Colbert, Louise Beavers, Freddie Washington, and Warren William. It's a story of two single mothers, one black, one white, connected because the black woman works for the white woman as they each try to raise their daughters under the entirely disparate challenges each faces. The nature of the story is revealing here of Hollywood's intent we have two women, two single mothers, and two daughters. Clearly, this was intended to be what was known as a woman's film at the time, a big soap opera targeted to a female audience. Notably, this 1959 version was created by two movie veterans who earned a reputation for turning the big screen soap opera into an art form, producer Ross Hunter and director Douglas Sirk. The two female leads, Lana Turner and Juanita Moore, were clearly the right choices. There was more variability, though, with the male lead. But Cirque went with a relative newcomer, John Gavin, 27 years old at the time. He'd appeared in only a handful of movies, though one of them was released the year before, Time to Love, A Time to Die, directed by Douglas Cirque. Gavin was being groomed for stardom at Universal, where the PR team was trying to convince everyone that he was the new Rock Hudson. And it had been Cirque who turned Hudson into a big-time movie star, breaking through in Magnificent Obsession opposite Jane Wyman. From 1959, also with Sandra D as Turner's daughter, and Susan Conner, the real-life daughter of Mexican actress Lupita Tovar and agent Paul Conner, as Moore's light-skinned African-American daughter, here's Imitation of Life. Imitation of Life was focused squarely on the women, their struggles, their victories, their staggering heartbreaks. As such, not much was asked of the leading man, John Gavin, who was there mostly to look really, really handsome. Much in the way that I, and uh, never mind. Gavin's handsomeness certainly helped his career, but it also stifled it a bit. He was often seen as just another pretty face, but that wasn't the case. Even after Gavin retired from acting, presumptions about his ability persisted. In 1981, his old friend from Hollywood, Ronald Reagan, then the newly elected president of the United States, appointed Gavin ambassador to Mexico, and many rolled their collective eyeballs at the idea of Reagan throwing a bone to an old pal from Hollywood. But it turns out John Gavin was fluent in both Spanish and Portuguese. He was a graduate of Stanford, where he earned a degree in economics and Latin American affairs. He also served as an intelligence officer during the Korean War, and like Ronald Reagan, served as president of the Screen Actors Guild. Coming up, more from leading man John Gavin, this time starring opposite Susan Hayward in a drama from 1961.